Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.5.3, Energy and Ecosystems from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. So this part of the specification is relatively straightforward. It's actually useful learning this part of the specification off by heart. In my A-Level exam, I was given a fill in the gaps question, which was word for word identical to the first two paragraphs shown here because I knew the spec and had included these sentences word for word in my notes, these were some easy marks to pick up. So first we should appreciate that in all ecosystems, plants synthesize organic compounds from atmospheric or aquatic carbon dioxide. We should know that most of the sugars synthesized by plants are used by the plant as respiratory substrates. The rest are used to make other groups of biological molecules. These biological molecules form the biomass of the plants. Then we move on to the definition of biomass and how we are able to measure the chemical energy store in dry biomass by using calorimetry. Then we need to know a few definitions and equations. We need to define gross primary production, GPP, as well as net primary production, NPP, how to calculate it and what it goes on to be used for. We should know how to calculate the net production of consumers, such as animals. We should also be able to define primary and secondary productivity and know how they are measured. Finally, we should be able to appreciate ways in which farming practices are designed to increase the efficiency of energy transfer. So let's make a start. In any ecosystem, plants synthesize organic compounds from atmospheric or aquatic CO2. Most sugars synthesized by plants are used as respiratory substrates. The rest are used to make biological molecules which form the biomass of the plant. Biomass is the mass of carbon or dry mass of tissue per given area. So how do we measure biomass? We can do this via a process known as calorimetry. First we dry the sample, then we burn the sample and use this to heat a known volume of water. We measure the temperature change and use this to calculate the chemical energy that was stored in the dry biomass. Now, calorimetry experiments can be done using very simple apparatus all the way to very complex apparatus. If you do A-level chemistry, you may have seen something like this, which is known as a bomb calorimeter. Experiments using more simple apparatus may look a bit more like this. However, the overall principle is the same. We burn a sample of dry biomass and use this to heat a known volume of water. We will always have some form of insulation around the water to prevent heat from dissipating to the surroundings. We will always have a thermometer to measure the temperature change of the water. We can also use a stirrer to ensure that heat is evenly distributed in the water. The gross primary production, GPP, is the chemical energy store in plant biomass in a given area or volume. Net primary production, NPP, is the chemical energy store in plant biomass after respiratory losses to the environment have been taken into account. The NPP can be calculated using the formula NPP equals GPP minus R, where R is the respiratory losses to the environment. Note that the NPP is available for plant growth and reproduction. It is also available for other trophic levels in the ecosystem, for example, those which include herbivores and decomposers. The net production of consumers, such as animals, can be calculated using the formula N equals I minus F plus R, where N is the net production of consumers, I is the chemical energy store in indigested food, F is the energy lost to the environment in feces and urine, and R, as before, are the respiratory losses to the environment. At this point, it would be useful to consider why so much energy is lost at each trophic level. There are a few reasons. In plants which are always found at the bottom of the food chain, some light energy is reflected or transmitted through leaves or not of the appropriate wavelength. This makes the efficiency of photosynthesis very low. Some energy is lost at each trophic level to the surroundings as heat from respiration. Some energy is lost in feces and urine, and some parts of the organism are not eaten. Note that the efficiency of energy transfer to consumers is greater than the transfer to producers. Food chains are often limited to four to five trophic levels. 
This is because energy is lost at each trophic level, making the efficiency of energy transfer very low. The total biomass is therefore less at higher trophic levels, meaning that at greater than four to five trophic levels, there is insufficient energy available to support a large enough breeding population. Because so much energy is lost at each trophic level, farming practices are designed to maximize the efficiency of energy transfer between trophic levels. How can one do this? First, you can simplify food webs, i.e. you reduce the energy losses to non-human food chains. How could you do this? Well, you could use pesticides, for example, so that energy isn't lost when pests feed on the crops. Another way to increase the efficiency of energy transfer would be to reduce respiratory losses within a human food chain, i.e. you control the conditions that livestock are kept in. You can restrict their movement, meaning less energy is lost as heat from respiration, or you can keep them warm, meaning less energy is used to generate body heat from respiration. Overall, this means we have more biomass, so we have a higher chemical energy store, meaning that we have a greater NPP and efficiency of energy transfer. Finally, we have primary and secondary productivity. This is the rate of primary and secondary production, respectively. It is measured as biomass in a given area in a given time. Therefore, an example of the units used to measure primary and secondary productivity would be kilojoules per hectare per year. Kilojoules being a measurement of the biomass, the hectares being the area, and a year being the time frame. Great, so that would be this part of the specification covered. We've covered the introduction to energy and ecosystems, as well as the definition of biomass and how to calculate it experimentally. We've covered GPP and how to define it, as well as the definition of NPP, how to calculate it, and how it is available for plant growth and reproduction, as well as other trophic levels in the ecosystem, such as herbivores and decomposers. We've also covered net production of consumers and how to calculate it. Finally, we have considered primary and secondary productivity and how it is measured, as well as how farming practices are designed to increase the efficiency of energy transfer. That would be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time, we'll be covering nutrient cycles.